All right, welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. In this one, we will be finishing out the Trojan that we uh, were making back last week, and it's been a while. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to revisit this one a little bit here. But uh, yeah, as we, you know, I, it's hard for me to remember what I covered and what I didn't. So just to, to dial it back a little bit here. We created some modules last time, I believe, uh, the Durlister module, the environment module, and uh, basically the functionality is super limited, not very useful at the moment, but that's going to change here uh, in the next few tasks that we have um, in this series, the next few videos. We're going to be really adding some useful functionality in. For now, we just have a you know this Durlister one here. And uh, the environment one is just printing some stuff to the screen, basically. And uh, in our git ignore file, we have our token, which is our GitHub API token, because we don't want to leak that. So we will have it in its own file, and we will run it, you know, we'll call it in from that file. So for the actual Trojan, you know, we have our imports up here, of course. And... Uh, this GitHub 3.1 is what's going to allow us to actually interact with GitHub, as you'll see. So first thing to mention is the connect function that we have created here. And here's where we read from the uh, the token uh, text file and uh, pass the stuff it needs for it to connect to our repository, the BHP Trojan one, which is a private repository so that we don't leak any sensitive information through this. So uh, for you guys that were following along at home using the uh, my GitHub repository, this one will be private, so you won't be able to see it, but uh, you can just copy the code from the video if you really want to follow along. But this is one, you don't really have to uh, create this or anything. I just think this is a really cool one personally. Um, but yeah, buy the book as well, you know, if you really want to dive into this stuff, uh, I'd highly recommend it. But um, for this one, right, we have our connection uh, function that does exactly what you would think. And, uh, yeah, so the thing that they mentioned about this, uh, this program here is that it will be a very small, you know, relatively small size once we compile this uh, using PyInstaller. And... Uh, you know, this is something we're going to need to do to drop this binary on all the compromised machines. So basically, like, uh, any C2 framework would have, like, an agent running on the box. You know, we will compile this with PyInstaller into an executable and have it run on the box. Um, I have a feeling that's coming up here soon. I didn't really look ahead too much on this stuff, but, uh, yeah. So if we wanted to build this thing into a full botnet... Um, We'd want to have it automatically be able to generate the Trojans. And, um, you know, we can have it set the ID and create a configuration file that gets pushed to GitHub. And it'll compile the Trojan into the executable. Uh, so we'll see how far we end up uh, taking this. There's a lot of ways that we could expand it. And the book even mentions, hey, feel free to go off on your own here and uh, add some stuff. But in the next sections, it will naturally be adding a lot of useful stuff. So after all that, if we want to add further, that's something we might want to consider. But um, yeah, so after we do that, the next thing here is the uh, the get file contents, and uh, we're just using that to uh, you know take in the directory name, module name, repository connection, and then return the contents of that module. So that's how we're going to grab the files from the remote repository and read the uh, the contents in locally. So the cool thing is we can use it for both reading the configuration options and the uh, source code of the modules. And uh, the, the Trojan class is the next thing I want to talk about. We'll get to this Git importer here uh, towards the end. But uh, this one is, uh, you know, we have our init function where we're initializing you know, the ID, config file, the data path. And as you see, we're taking in the ID. We're going to build the json config file from that id and even have it create its own directory and that'll be the data path and then for the repo we'll have it connect to our github right running the connection that we talked about up here so here's where we're going to actually retrieve the remote configuration 
uh, from the repository. That way, you the uh, Trojan actually knows which modules uh, to run. And uh, we see here for each one, when you, when you see these execs, this was pretty cool, right? This is basically like an eval. So here's how we're actually doing the importing, right? We're going to import the module here, right? And uh, it's actually going to run it as Python code. So this is one of those functions that uh, as a developer, you got to be careful with. Uh, because if it's user controllable, then you can get code execution, right? But um, yeah, that's how that's why we're using exec here. We're actually going to execute this as code here. So thus, we're going to be able to import the uh, the modules, and at the end, it's just going to return the whole config actually. Um, and then uh, for the module runner, this thing is uh, kind of interesting here. Uh, as far as what it's doing, it's calling this dot run, which is what we define down here. And here's where the program's actually going to be spending a lot of time here, right? In the while true. And uh, it will be setting the config and it's going to be multi-threaded as well here. And the reason that we're doing the sleep, uh, the random sleep is so that uh, we could just be a little bit more evasive with this thing. If there's any kind of stuff that's trying to identify bots on the internet, you know, by the frequency of which they're sending the requests. Uh, we can avoid that, uh, that detection by sleeping a random amount of time between one and 10 seconds in this case. So the next thing that I really want to cover, this is really interesting here. This is the, probably the most interesting part of this whole Trojan, in my opinion, is how we are what they called hacking Python's import functionality. This is really cool. I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know it worked like this. So basically what Python allows us to do is to customize how it imports uh, modules. And so if it can't find a module locally, we can call any import class that we define, right? That's this line right here. So what it allows us to do, right? is we can define a, in the uh, sys.meta underscore path list here, which is something we define here in the main. Uh, we define it that, hey, if you don't, if you're not able to import this, then run the, uh, you know, you know check in the uh, git importer class, right? And so this git importer class is what's going to be getting the imports, right? So... First thing it's going to do is it's going to check uh, the find module to try to retrieve it. And then if it can't find it, it will go to the uh, load module. And so load module here uh, will be able to pull it in, which is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, definitely not something that I would have thought to do. So that's like one of the values of, uh, you know, going through the exercises in a book like this. You can find... You know, now that we've gotten farther in it, we can find some of the uh, interesting kind of hacky things they do. But uh, yeah, that's why they're calling it new module here, right? In the case that you don't have it, then uh, we'll grab it and uh, define it as like the new module, right? And uh, yeah, we'll return new module. But um, from there, really, I mean, we're almost, we're almost through it pretty much. As you see here, we're, there's some print statements along the way. Um, but uh, yeah, one important thing to note is that GitHub will actually return us, like when we're running the modules, actually return us base64 encoded data. So we need to, that's why we're decoding here. Anytime we get data from GitHub, we're going to need to recode, uh, we're going to need to decode it so that we can read it. And you guys will see in a sec when we, uh, when we run the, uh, the script, run the Trojan. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If we go to the main, we can see the high level, right? So here we're uh, passing in ABC to Trojan. And it'll, you know, it's, I believe, creating an instance of the class. That's what I'm always saying. I don't know if that's, that's true. That's the correct terminology. I'm not a developer. But yeah, we're doing this so we can run it, basically, run the Trojan class. And we're calling the dot run on uh, the uh, Trojan instance here and uh 
because of the wild truth, this is where it's going to hang out most of the time, as it's calling these other things by a consequence. So, yeah. So here, where you see in the init function, self and ID, the ID parameter is uh, ABC in this case, right? So let's go ahead and run it, shall we? Um, if we run this, the first thing we need to do, I needed to, I already did this off camera, is I pushed all this code, like when it was complete, I pushed it to my GitHub repository. Because uh, if you don't push it first, then you're going to get some errors as uh, certain things won't exist in the repository that it needs. So run it. And what we're going to see is, you know, I guess it can take a second to run at times. But uh, then you'll see the print statements go, attempting to retrieve Duralister, uh, attempting to retrieve environment, and then it'll tell you it's in the Duralister module, it's in the environment module, and then just uh, it's going to do some sleep, right? So that is the working program here. So if you go to... If you're not aware, aware of why it printed that, if we go back to, uh, where was it? You can see here, attempting to retrieve uh, in the name of the module, right? Which is this right here that was passed in. And uh, let's see from there. These were actually called inside the modules themselves. So yeah, there you go. Uh, this is very bare bones. This is very small and not very useful yet, but that's something that's going to change very soon as we go through the, the next section and start adding some really Trojan-y things to this Trojan. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this series so far. If so, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well to help get the message out there. And uh, yeah, if you want to you know, learn the technical content, you know, of course I got the videos on screen for you right now. You can check those out. But if you want some additional coaching from me and you just didn't see my announcement yet, I will announce to you right now that I'm going to be creating a, uh, a web application pen testing course where I'm going to be working with you guys directly hands-on in, uh, zoom calls for four weeks starting, um, at uh, probably the very beginning of November. Uh, Signups will be the end of October. So go ahead and check out the description below and uh, follow that link to sign up for the uh, free waiting list. That way you can get notified once that goes live. And I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.